everybody. Thanks for joining me for another real-time paint with me. I always want to do these as cheaply as possible, so if you can find a Walmart nearby, you can grab some canvases, maybe the primary paint colors in black and white, and a pretty decent set of brushes to get started. And you can do a painting right along with me for just under $11. Because it is September, I thought it would be appropriate to start with some back-to-school themed artwork. So with our small canvas and all the colors squirted out on just like a paper plate or any, even just like a magazine or newspaper, something you can have um, nearby to use as a palette, I always like to start with yellow because it's a pretty easy color to cover up if you make any mistakes. So using my yellow, I'm just going through and kind of sketching out the idea for this month. So again, with a back to school kind of theme, I thought it'd be cool to do just like a tabletop um, scene of school supplies and things that you might find in an academic setting. So I started off by making a big semicircle in the corner um, to try to make a globe and then just added a few little details on the bottom as like a stand for the globe to sit on. And then I'm going into books. Books are basically just a bunch of rectangles. You can um, practice perspective or you can just straight up stack them, stack them up and down. Um, I have one book laid out open on my tabletop, so it kind of looks like a notebook that I could be writing in with a pencil. And then over on the left, I'm just stacking up a couple different books and let's try for an apple so i'm making kind of a circle shape with a stem and a leaf and then i'm probably gonna just make a tabletop like just a line a horizon line going all the way across the page and when it's time to go in with color you can paint these whatever colors you want you don't have to go through with the colors that i've chosen but the yellow is really forgiving so you can go over the yellow lines that you've done pretty easily um, i'm going in first with just the basic local colors of the objects so right now i'm doing a red apple and i'll go back and add some more dimension to it a little later but again, there's just so much you can create with just these three primary colors. So I'm taking some red and mixing just a little bit of blue in with it to get a different shade. Um, and then all I'm doing is just kind of filling in the different shapes with colors. And again, you can create whatever colors you want to do. You don't have to follow along exactly with what I have because I'm just making some different colors for each object. But first things first is we're just getting all the local colors down. I'm making a little bit of gray. And I'll go back and add some dimension to all of these objects, some lights and shadows to try to make them look more 3D later on. But so I'm making the base of my globe look like it's metal by having just some gray, some silver, and I'm trying to use different shades for each face of the object, just again to try to give it a little bit more dimension. Don't forget that every month I will have this real-time paint with me available for you to follow along with and pause whenever you need to if you want to try to get a closer look at things, but I'll also have just the line work, like a coloring sheet, available as a PDF that you could download. If you don't feel like painting with me, you could just color alongside. That would be fun too.
like working with maybe one larger flat brush to get big colorful areas and then I'll go back in with some detail with a smaller round brush a little bit later but as you can see I just use these two brushes in these five colors for the entire time it's good to have a paper towel nearby too just so you can clean off your brushes every now and then and please forgive me teachers everywhere I'm not doing a great job with um, my geography <laughs> I'm just basically adding in generic shapes for a globe um, I'm sorry I'm probably offending all the islanders but you get the idea Acrylic paint is great because it dries so quickly and it's um, water soluble so you can clean it up pretty easily if you get to it while things are still relatively wet. Um, but once they dry, they're permanent. They're pretty um, plasticky and kind of hard to cover up um, or get off <laughs> of clothing or other items. So make sure you're careful while you're working. But the good thing about their quick drying time is that, again, you can just go back and add these big swatches of local color and then you can go back and layer on top of them because some of the paints might be a little transparent. That's one downside of getting cheaper paints. But um, again, you can just layer up, add some dimension by mixing some colors, different shades of the same color and painting them on top of others. flat brush is great because when you turn it on its side you can get some pretty clean straight lines so it's really helpful when trying to do the edge of the globe like that or again when you're doing your tabletop or the rectangles of the books you can get some interesting mark making um, that you might be surprised that you could achieve with just one brush especially a cheap brush try to think through and if I know that I could use a color that I already have on my brush go ahead and put it elsewhere on my canvas before I wash it off so I decided this is going to be a green book so I'm painting the cover and all around the pages but I'm going to leave that middle part white for now One thing of course that I love about art is that you can make it whatever you want it to be. There's no right or wrong answers for how to do things. But if you're curious as to um, what might make some paintings more successful than others is um, could be about proportion. So even though I'm not doing these like super realistically by any means, um, I'm trying to think about, you know, how big would a book be compared to an apple? How big would the apple be compared to the globe? So even though they're not like dead on, at least they're close to 
the correct size in relation to each other. You can see what I'm doing now is probably one of the hardest things ever is trying to create a brown color. So brown is just created when you mix two complementary colors together. So that would be like yellow plus purple or orange plus blue or red plus green. But when you just have all the primaries together, it's basically mixing a little bit of red, yellow, and blue in varying amounts until you get a good chocolatey brown color. If that's all way too frustrating for you, just buy another tiny little bottle of paint and get yourself a brown that's pre-made. So switching to my smaller brush, I decided I wanted to try to go ahead and lighten up my pencil a little bit. So I went back with some white and back and forth with the red and yellow um, to get an orange. But as I'm painting it right on top of the white that I'd already laid down, it's turning out more of like a peachy color. And I'm just going to keep experimenting, going back and forth until I get a color that satisfies me. When I think of a pencil, what color do I think of? You can see I keep dipping back into my water and sort of swirling it around in my paint color. Another good thing about acrylics is if you want something to be a little more fluid, so it's a little easier to get um, your paint to spread across the canvas, is you just add a little bit of water. You don't need a whole lot and it will cause your paint to be more transparent, but again, you can just go back and like layer over it if that bothers you.
Now I'm going in and trying to add a little bit of dimension to my apple. So I'm just mixing some different shades of red. I've got um, more pinky colors. I've got a red that has some orange mixed in with it. Um, but a trick for trying to make a darker shade of a color rather than just adding black to it is you add its complement. So across the color wheel from red is green. So if I take a tiny little bit of green and mix it in with red, I'm going to get a deeper, almost maroon kind of color. And I'm going in with that um, to try to add a little bit of shadow to my apple. So now I've mixed another really like pale gray kind of color and I've watered it down quite a bit because I'm going to go back in and try to add some dimension to the pages of my book. I can still really clearly see the yellow outlines and I want to sort of hide that a little bit at least. So I'm just going over it and kind of giving it a wash of gray. Um, another cool thing about the paint brushes is that once you dry them um, and make sure that there's no moisture left in them you can kind of shape them with your fingers or with a paper towel so even the small round brush I could shape to um, give me kind of a flat line if I want to go back and add um, almost like the illusion of there being some pages in my book Again, I'm going back with some silver, some gray, just to try to um, create some dimensions in the open pages that I have of my notebook that's laying out on the table. So I'm putting some darker gray right in the center, like where the book would be bound underneath the pencil, and I'm trying to lighten up as I go out towards the edges, just to create the illusion that maybe the book can fold in half, that it's darker in the middle because there's more shadow there because there's a little bit of depth.
made kind of a warmer chocolatey color by adding more yellow into the brown that I had created. I'm going back with my bigger brush to try to create the actual tabletop. Now usually when people paint, it's recommended to work from big to small, from background to foreground. Um, but honestly, sometimes I like painting in some of the smaller details first and then going back with a flat brush so I can still get some really straight edges and using that to kind of clean up the edges of the other objects that I've painted. So now that I'm going in with my tabletop, I can um, really make sure that I'm careful around my book shapes, around the shape of my globe, and even that little space in between the actual globe and the metal base of the globe, I wanna show that there's a little bit of the tabletop um, peeking through behind that. So as long as you you know are careful and you don't mind um, you know, just going back and forth in between little objects, it can actually be really helpful to paint larger blocks of color around your little detailed objects. Once I've gone around some of these trickier areas, I will go back, and you saw me just do it a second ago, and try to just go with one long brush stroke just to sort of um, hide the paint strokes and make it seem like the tabletop itself is more flat. So that's something that you have the freedom to do with acrylic paints is, again, just layer, layer, layer. decided to go in with yet another shade of gray just to try to show the cylinder that the globe is sitting on itself. So as long as I have like all these different shades of gray um, distinguished from each other, I think you can pretty much tell what's happening. So you can make your background whatever colors you want. You could try to paint like a black chalkboard back there as if you're in an actual classroom. You could just do it your favorite color. I decided to just go with like a light blue. So it's different from the glow, but it's still just kind of a neutrally um, calm sort of color. Uh, the thing when you're trying to make colors lighter is you need a very small amount of the actual color 
and probably more white than you're expecting. So that's why I just kind of scooped my colors into a separate clean area of my palette to try to mix the colors that I needed. And I knew it was the biggest area of color on my canvas. So I wanted to create a lot of it because I didn't want to have to try to recreate this exact color again if I were to run out. Again, I'm using this opportunity to go in with the background and just clean up any edges that are not very straight, that are not very clean, that might be a little bit wobbly, and I'm using my background color to just kind of cover up some of those spots. Um, so, you know, you're the artist. You get to choose. <laughs> you get to make all these decisions. So you can rotate your canvas however it makes it easier for you to paint. Um, you could switch your brush sizes if that makes you a little more comfortable, but um, just go in and try to get around every object that you painted earlier.
realized in painting my background that my table wasn't quite level, so I left a little bit of space that I can go back with my tiny brush and just add a little bit more brown to make that tabletop more complete. Where it can get really fun. So as you see, I added just some clean water to my palette, and then I'm adding just the tiniest bit of black because a little bit of black goes a really long way, and I'm trying to get um, a watery, dark shade that I can use to go back and now start adding some shadows to my objects. So as the artist, again, I get to make this decision. I can kind of imagine, because I'm not looking at a real reference picture or anything, I can imagine where my light is coming from. And by deciding, okay, I want light to be coming from the left side, shining sort of down and towards these objects, then I know that I want to go back and start adding this like really light kind of wash of a shadow to the lower right side of every single one of these objects. And by doing that, it's gonna make the viewer think that these objects are a little bit more three-dimensional, like they're actually rounded, they're actually curved, they're actually taking up space and casting a shadow onto other objects. So I'm making this pretty watery and thin and um, just, you know, a very light wash of black because I don't want it to completely cover up the image that I have underneath, but I want it to just almost be like a filter on top of these objects. So I'm just deciding anywhere I think there would be a shadow cast, anywhere that's under another object, I'm going to add just that wash of black. And I'm so careful not to get too much, so that's why I'm dipping into my water a lot and I'm drying off my paintbrush, just so that I have a very little amount of paint and I can go back and forth with a drier brush to sort of blend that out. too is that I'm going back and forth with my grays and adding some darker blacks closer to the objects itself because the shadows are more intense near the base of the object that's casting the shadow so if I just have like a flat gray all the way it's it's not going to look very true very real to life so I'm trying to go back and add some more intense pure black really close to the objects that I'm trying to do the shadows for. So now I'm even going to try to attempt a cast shadow from the pencil onto the notebook. So it's not touching the pencil exactly, it's right underneath it. But again, starting with like a really intense black close to the object and then sort of fading it out, watering it down, getting it a little more gray as the shadow moves away from the object that's casting the shadow. And of course, if this is just too intense or frustrating for you, you absolutely don't have to do it. It's just really cool to see how much of an impact adding shadows can have on your artwork.
again, this is where I can really play around with trying to shape that small brush to get a small flat edge to help me achieve these shadows and get right up next to the objects that I'm trying to show some depth in. Especially here under the apple, I feel like adding that shadow there just really makes it pop off the canvas. I think I'm pretty much done with my actual image. Looking at it a little closer, making sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. Looks nice. I hope you're happy with yours as well. This part is completely optional. It's just something that um, I might want to recommend to you if you want to start creating a collection of paintings. Is going back and just painting around the edges. Um, the sides of your canvas board look more professional when they're all painted matte black, you could go back and just um, extend your image onto the edge of your canvas as if, you know, this tabletop is kind of wrapping around the entire thing. But I'm just going to go back and add um, some black all the way around and call this thing done.
you enjoyed painting with me. Join me again next month as I create another canvas painting for you in real time so you can follow along.